reciprocal function. The reciprocal function. Take a moment to recap what we learned in the last lesson. What's the equation for direct variation? What's the equation for inverse variation? Go do that. So of course, we have our equation for direct variation, y equals k times x, which means we can find that constant variation k by dividing our y values by our x values, right? Because we solved for k. For inverse variation, of course, we have y equals k divided by x. So the constant of variation k can be found by multiplying y times x. Looking at a, b, and c, we had z varies, right? That means we write equals k jointly. That's another word for directly with x and y. And then inversely, under with w. So we've got z equals k times xy divided by w. Then when we're given values, we can solve for that constant of variation k. And in this case, it ends up being 14. So our particular equation is z equals 14 xy divided by w. So when we're given values for x, y, and w, we can find z. The reciprocal function. Let's learn a new parent function. Fill in the table of values. Hmm, one divided by negative one half. What are we going to do with that? Well, y equals 1 divided by negative 1 half. When I divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. So it equals 1 times negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2. So in that case, when I see that 1 divided by negative 1 third, multiply by the reciprocal, 1 times negative 3, negative 3. All right, we maybe should have started with 0, because what happens? 1 divided by 0, thou shalt not divide by zero. So we say undefined. One divided by one third, are you getting good at this? Multiply by the reciprocal, we have three, two. Oh, one divided by one is one. One divided by two, one half, and one third. Let's plot these points. Connect your points and you'll notice that we have asymptotes. Do you kind of remember seeing this graph before? We did this with inverse variation as well. Let's fill in domain, range, and our asymptotes. So for our parent function, y equals 1 over x, the reciprocal function, we have vertical asymptote of the y-axis. So that is x equals 0. And horizontal asymptote of the x-axis, or y equals 0. Remember, when we're naming an asymptote, think of which axis does it cut through. So the x-axis cuts through the y-axis, so we say y equals zero, and the y-axis cuts through the x-axis, so we say x equals zero. Now look at domain and range. Remember we're walking along that x-axis? Well, I'm gonna see graph from negative infinity all the way up to the y-axis because you can never ever cross a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to have to hop over the y-axis. So negative infinity up to zero. And does it include zero? No. So parentheses. And then it starts up right after zero all the way to positive infinity. This is one where it might be easier to just say all reals x can't equal zero. What about the range? Kind of that same idea. Remember now we're climbing up the y-axis. I have graph everywhere I go, except when I get to zero again. So from negative infinity up to zero, and then from zero to positive infinity. So to emphasize now, do we have an x-intercept? Nope. Do we have a y-intercept? No. Remember, don't leave it blank because that seems like you don't know. Tell me, none. Next, do we kind of have pattern points for the reciprocal function? A little bit. Think about it. When we went over a half, what happens? One divided by a half is two. So in the positive first quadrant, I went up to, and in the third quadrant, I went down to. And of course, when we go over one, one divided by one is one, one divided by negative one, negative one. And then last, think about when we go over two. Well, one divided by two, one half. So I'll go up a half and down a half. One more time. Remember, it's easier to remember the pattern points with our parent functions. So let's look at it one more time. If I go over a half, I go up two. Over a half, down two. Over one, up one. Over one, down one. Over a half, over two, up a half. Over two, down a half. 
Remember those pattern points, it helps us. Now let's look at transformation. So I see y equals six divided by x. So what's happened there? Well, they've multiplied by six. So that's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of six. What changes there? How does that change my table of values? Well, every y coordinate is gonna be multiplied by six. So knowing that we have a vertical stretch by a factor of six, when I think about my pattern points, normally I go over a half and up two, but now the y values have been multiplied by six, so I'll go over a half up 12. Let's plot that. Yikes, that was way off the graph. Let's try the next one. I would go over one, up one, but now I'm going to multiply by six, so over one, up six, and then when I go over two, normally up a half, multiply by six, I'll go up three. Now let's do that on the other side. So over a half, down 12, over one, down six, and over two, normally down a half, but half times six, down three. Hmm, what's gonna happen here? It's still gonna hug the asymptotes, the X and Y axis, so let's sketch this. How do we know the asymptotes didn't change? Well, on our parent function, the asymptotes were the X and Y axis, and then all I did was vertically stretch, so I'm still not going to cross the X or Y axis. Those will stay the same. So our vertical asymptote is the Y axis, so that's X equals zero. Horizontal is the X axis, Y equals zero. Our domain and range, those haven't changed. And do we have an X or Y intercept? Nope, still don't. Let's notice one more thing. When I had a vertical stretch by a factor of six, did the graph pull in towards the asymptotes or did it pull away from those asymptotes? I think it looks like it pulled away. When we've stretched, we pulled away from the asymptotes. On the same coordinate plane, we're going to graph y equals negative six divided by x. What do you think is gonna happen now? Well, we'll still multiply the y values by six. However, negative, that's a reflection about the horizontal axis. So currently, just to emphasize, we have the reciprocal function graphed in quadrants one and three. As we reflect across the horizontal axis, the portion that's in the first quadrant will reflect into the fourth quadrant, and the portion in the third quadrant will reflect up into the second quadrant. Have the characteristics of the graph changed? Vertical horizontal asymptote, x, y intercepts, domain range, no, those stayed the same. Y equals 0 0.25 divided by X. What do you think's happening? Well, vertical compression by 0 0.25. So we're compressing by a factor of 1 fourth. So how would that change the values in my table? Well, it's gonna compress my Y values by a factor of 1 fourth. So I'd multiply all those Y values by 0.25. So my original pattern points on my parent function were over 1 half, up and down 2. So now I'm gonna multiply that two by one fourth. So I'm gonna go over one half and up one half. Now, before I get too far here, where are my vertical and horizontal asymptotes at? The same place. I'm gonna have one at X equals zero. That's my vertical asymptote, the Y axis. And then the other Y equals zero. That's my horizontal asymptote, the X axis. Back to those pattern points. So after the first point, I go over one and then up one times a fourth, so one fourth. These are gonna get so squished together. If I try to go over two from that center and up a half times a fourth, I'm gonna go up one eighth, yikes. So unlike the stretch where our points got pulled away from those asymptotes, now I'm getting all squished into those asymptotes. Now that I have my graph, did anything else change for my parent function? Is my domain the same, my range, x and y intercepts? Yeah, all the same. Let's keep this rolling. Looking at this next one, y equals one divided by x plus one minus two. Whoa, we've got some translations here. We've got a plus one inside the function, so we know that's a translation to the left inside opposite. And then we've got a minus two outside the reciprocal function, so that's a translation down two. Okay, when we're graphing translations like this, we wanna be really careful. We identified our transformations, check. Now we're gonna sketch our asymptotes first because that's gonna kind of give us a baseline for where our graph needs to be built. And then we can plot points and sketch a graph using those pattern points. Let's do it. Okay, wait a minute though. Where are my asymptotes gonna be at? Well, let's think about that. I've gone to the left one unit, so that's affected my 
vertical asymptote. So now that's at x equals negative one instead of x equals zero. And then I went left and then down two units. So that's affected my horizontal asymptote. So now that's at y equals negative two. Ooh, now I can build my graph from here. So starting from the center of those asymptotes, I can go over one half and then up one divided by a half. So one times two. So up two and down two. Okay, back to the center and then I'm gonna go over one, one divided by one. Okay, then up one, down one, and then back to the center over two and then one divided by two. So up and down a half. We can do this. Well, there we have a translated reciprocal function. No problem. Now we gotta go do domain and range. Well, the only place I'm not gonna see the graph is at those asymptotes. So it probably would have been smart for me to do those right away once I had my asymptotes. So my domain would just be all reals, except for that asymptote at x equals negative one. So I'm gonna exclude that. Range is gonna be all reals. Y can't equal that asymptote, so y can't equal negative two. Okay, then of course, right? X intercept, y intercept, none. Oh, wait a minute. We actually have an X and a Y intercept this time because our asymptotes shifted. So since I didn't make a table for this, I should probably go find those. X intercept is where Y equals zero. So I'm just gonna grab my original function and plug in zero for Y. Zero equals one half X plus one minus two. Okay, I'm going after the X, but right now the X is kind of buried in there. So let's get rid of this, some of this stuff. I'm gonna add the two to the other side. 2 equals 1 divided by x plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and hug that x plus 1 so I don't get crazy. Right now, x is trapped in the denominator, so to get it out of the denominator, I need to multiply it out. Well, look at that. I get x equals negative 1 half. Now, notice something. I decided to divide off my 2 and not distribute it. When I was solving, you could totally distribute the two and solve for x, we'd get the same answer. So I get x equals negative one half, but this is an intercept, so it's a point. So I need to make sure I write this as an, an x intercept, negative one half comma zero. Y intercepts, we're used to finding those, plug in zero for x, go find it. Looks like my y intercept is zero negative one. And now one for you to try. Pause the video, try the whole problem. Remember your steps. State the transformations, sketch the asymptotes, then plot the points and sketch the graph. Well, welcome to the family reciprocal function. Let's look at the general equation. Y equals A divided by X minus H plus k. And let's just really emphasize what each piece is. A is the dilation, so we could be vertically stretched or compressed. Remember, if there's a negative in front, that's a reflection. H is your horizontal translation. It also happens to be your vertical asymptote. So immediately, when I look at the equation, I should be able to tell the vertical asymptote. Likewise, K is that vertical translation, which creates the horizontal asymptote. So I want you to keep in mind at all times that just from the equation, we know the asymptotes. Let's look back at example four. We had X plus one. Well, what's H? Remember it's X minus H. So H was negative one. And look, that was our vertical asymptote. Also, K is negative two plus negative two, and that ended up being our horizontal asymptote. So as soon as we see the equation, we know our asymptotes. We also then know our domain and range. Let's practice. Okay, let's think about this. Our original asymptotes are at zero and zero, right? X equals zero, Y equals zero. Well, now it's X equals two. So that means I went to the right two and Y equals three. I went up three. We're ready to plug into the equation y equals 5 divided by x minus 2 plus 3. Try 7 and 8. Check your answers. Notice I wrote in domain and range just to emphasize once we know the asymptotes, we know the domain and range of our reciprocal function family. Are we going to be stuck like this? <laughs> 